In this video, we're going to look at how flow is measured in a pipeline with a Venturi meter. The idea is that if you have a long pipeline moving fluid in this direction, that in one section of the pipeline you can put this device called Venturi meter into the pipeline, and all the flow will have to go through this constriction. And by measuring the difference in the pressure between this point and this point, you get a, a sense for the difference in the pressure from here to here with a manometer reading. And that's precisely what you need in order to correlate that with the flow rate. And there's three fundamental principles that are used in order to kind of develop this, this model, this mathematical model for the flow. One is a static pressure analysis. The second principle is the continuity principle of mass conservation. And the third idea is the Bernoulli equation. So if we combine those three things, we can analytically determine what the volumetric flow rate is as a function of this uh, manometer reading. So let's see how we do that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to write a, a pressure equation from point one to point two, recognizing that there's water moving in this pipeline, and then there's a different fluid down here, say mercury, which is um, uh, inside the manometer. So if we go downwards from point one to this level here, which is even with the top of the mercury reading here, then we'll add pressure in an amount equal to gamma water times delta Z. And as we work our way around to the other side and we go upwards from here back to here, we're going to subtract pressure. And the amount we subtract will also be equal to gamma water times this height, which I've labeled delta Z. So I'm going to ignore that because those two cancel each other. And I'm going to say the pressure at one plus the unit weight of water times this height, which is the depth, minus the unit weight of mercury times the depth equals the pressure at section two, okay? And I can rearrange these equations as follows. I could say pressure at one minus pressure at two is equal to the unit weight of mercury minus the unit weight of water times the manometer reading H. And I can also divide through by the unit weight of water. And if I do that, divide through over here, then I can say that P1 minus 2 over the unit weight of water is just equal to the specific gravity of mercury minus 1 times the manometer reading. Okay, so I now have a way of connecting the difference in pressure, point one and point two, directly to the manometer reading and the specific gravity of the um, manometer fluid. So I'm going to replace my equation for static pressure with this equation at P1 minus P2 over gamma water is just equal to the specific gravity of mercury minus one times the manometer reading. Okay, I'm going to park that there and erase this so I can use this space again. Okay, the second idea I'm going to bring in is the continuity principle. And um, under steady flow, that means that the volumetric flow rate into a control volume is the same as the volumetric flow rate out of the control volume. Imagine a control volume, which is has one section here, another section which is here, and so it extends to this region here. And what I can say is that the flow rate in here at section one is going to be the same as the flow rate at section two. And it's a system. This system we have a constant density system. So we can um, say that the volumetric mass balance um, is a, an adequate substitute of mass balance itself. So that means that, in general, the change in volume with respect to time of a control volume is equal to Q in minus Q out. And this is true when you have a constant density. And this is a steady state system, so this goes to zero. So this means that the flow in equals flow out. So this means that the volumetric flow rate at section one 
must equal the volumetric flow rate at section 2. And this means that the velocity cross-section the average velocity at section 1 times the area at section 1 is equal to the cross-section the average velocity at section 2 times the area at section 2. And this means that V1 times pi over 4 d1 squared equals v2 times pi over 4 d2 squared. And we can see that this pi over 4 term cancels, and we can end up with an equation for the velocity at section 1 which is just equal to the velocity at section 2 multiplied by d2 over d1 squared. Okay? So I'm going to park this over here for bookkeeping purposes and say that now I've got an equation which is going to allow me to express volume 1 as a function of volume 2. That's multiplied by d2 over d1 squared. Great, so we're moving right along. The last thing I'm going to do is write in a Bernoulli equation from point 1 to point 2. There's a streamline moving along here, right along the center of the pipeline. And Bernoulli's equation is applicable for sort of an um, indicid flow, um, steady flow along a streamline. And over a very short distance, it's without any major turbulence, which it's fair to assume that the um, um, inviscid approximation is valid. So Bernoulli's equation tells us that P1 over gamma plus V1 squared over 2G plus C1 equals P2 over gamma, and this is the unit weight of water, plus P2 squared over 2G plus Z2. Okay, Z1 and Z2 are at the same height, so I can cancel these out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this um, so that P2 minus P1 is, or P1 minus P2 is on one side and then the velocity is on the, other, on the other side. So if I write this as P1 minus P2 over gamma, then that's going to be equal to P2 squared minus P1 squared over 2G. Well, P1 minus P2 over gamma, we already figured out what that is. That's just equal to the um, scissor gravity of mercury minus 1 times the nominator reading. So we can write the specific gravity of mercury minus 1 times the nominator reading. It's going to be equal to this. But I also have a way of expressing v1 as a function of v2. So I can do that. If I do that, I can say this is v2 squared minus v1 squared, which is going to be equal to v2 squared times d2 over d1 to the fourth power. And this is all over 2g. So this tells me that this is going to be equal to e2 squared over 2g multiplied by 1 minus e2 over d1 to the fourth power. Okay, what I've done here now is I've, I've, I've been able to evaluate velocity here at section 2 based in I have one equation, velocity section 2, and the manometer reading is the only other unknown. So I'll rearrange these up here. So now I can say that v2 squared is 
going to be equal to 2g times specific gravity of mercury minus 1 times the manometer reading divided by 1 minus d2 over d1 to the fourth power. And that means that d2 is equal to the square root of 2g times the specific gravity of mercury minus 1 times the manometer reading divided by 1 minus d2 over d1 raised to the fourth power. Okay, so now have an analytical expression for the velocity at section 2, which is based only on the manometer reading h. And so um, the last thing is to figure, figure out the volumetric flow rate, and that's obtained by taking the velocity at section 2 and multiply by the area at section 2. So to close this out, we can say that the volumetric flow rate, q, is equal to velocity at section 2 times the area at section 2. And so that's going to be equal to pi over 4 d2 squared times the square root of 2g times the specific gravity of mercury minus 1 times the manometer reading over 1 minus d2 over d1 to the fourth power. This took a little while. We had to go through a number of steps, combine three different ideas, a static pressure analysis, continuity analysis, and a Bernoulli equation. But by pulling those three things together, we came up with an analytical expression for the volumetric flow rate in a pipe based only on a manometer reading, H. And that's why these Venturi meters are used in practice, because it's a very straightforward way um, and, re and reliable way to get discharge readings in pipelines.